24. A 35 millimeter film camera from the 1950s that shoots square format images on regular 35 millimeter film and has a unique spring motor drive that allows it to shoot continuously at up to 8 frames per second uh, for as many as 25 frames. I wanted to make this video because there are no other videos that I could find online about this camera and because I think that it's really fascinating and I wanted to share the things that I've learned about this camera and about this company from researching it myself. I wrote a much more in-depth article uh, that I will link below and so that'll talk a lot more about the history of the camera company and have a lot more technical information and sample images as well as comparisons of these lenses on a modern high resolution digital sensor. For this video I wanted to focus on my experience using this camera and also share some footage and some photos from a trip that I took to Florida recently uh, where I got to watch my brother playing in a professional tennis tournament. So this camera was made in Germany in the 1950s, specifically between 1953 and 1957. From what I read online, they made approximately 11,500 of these, and they made three different models, the 24, which is this one of course, the 36, which shoots a standard 24 by 36 frame, and the 18, which shoots a proper half frame. There are several half frame cameras available. Pen F system, very successful system with really spectacular lenses, but there are not very many other square format 35mm cameras, which is kind of surprising to me. There is one other competitor, Zeiss under the 10X name, made a similar camera in the 30s and 40s, but that was not very successful and those are very expensive and collector's items these days. Square format is an aspect ratio that I really like. I think that for whatever reason, the way that I compose images in my head works for square format. In medium format, there are plenty of square options. That is typically the native aspect ratio for a lot of systems, most notably Hasselblad, but also if you think all of the TLR cameras. The other thing that makes this camera special and unique is the spring-driven motor drive system that both cocks the shutter, fires the shutter, and winds the film all at the same time. It's rated to shoot up to 8 frames per second. I think that also is at 1 500th of a second. If you're shooting at the slower shutter speeds, of course, it's not going to be able to move at 8 frames per second. It'll be slightly slower. I think that this camera is especially well suited to action photography. I think sports, for instance, you know necessarily want to have to be winding and uh, missing the shots that you're trying to get. That's why I thought it was a really fun idea to take this uh, to my brother's tennis tournament. Loading film into this camera is a little bit tricky because of the take-up spool that is required it is a proprietary three-piece take-up spool that is light tight. It comes apart into three pieces. The inside piece has little teeth that lock into the sprocket holes of the film. 
and prevent it from slipping out when you're pulling it very quickly in continuous shooting mode. First step is to load the film leader into the take-up spool. Make sure that the little teeth get caught on the sprocket holes. Then put the take-up spool back together. Lift up, let it fall. And this is a test roll. I'm not wasting film, but you can see when I fire the shutter, it pulls the film across in automatic mode. So, close it up. There are no frame lines in the viewfinder. You have to either guess or use an accessory finder. This is the Robot Universal Finder. It goes from 30 millimeters up to 75 millimeters. You rotate it to increase or decrease the magnification. I have found that the viewfinder roughly correlates to 40 millimeters. If you're using the 40 millimeter lens, then you don't necessarily need the accessory viewfinder, but it is nice to have. One of the things that I really like about this camera is how it captures motion. When you put it into continuous shooting mode and you're taking short bursts of three to five photos, you can capture motion in a really unique way. And to me, it reminds me of cinema. When I was shooting my brother playing tennis, I would always think about what a little group of, of images would, would be like. Kind of in a way, like a little GIF. I also made a couple of contacts palladium prints. It's kind of hard to see. It's a little strip of images of Jake serving and shows the, the full motion of, of him serving. I, I really like the, the brush strokes of the hand-painted palladium emulsion. I have three lenses for this camera. 30 millimeter 3.5 Xenagon, the 40 millimeter 1.9 Xenon, and lastly the 75 millimeter 3.8 Tele Xenar lens. Uh, all three of these are made by Schneider. Schneider did also make a 38 millimeter 2.8, and they made a 200 millimeter lens. Zeiss also made a 50mm f2 sonar for this system. That lens is pretty uncommon, pretty expensive, and prone to separation. So it's hard to find an affordable copy that's in good condition. But that is one that I would very much like to get my hands on. One of the unique features of these lenses is the way in which hyperfocal distance is represented for various apertures. Every other aperture has a color, and if I set this to f8, I can see the color is green. So then if I go to the focusing ring and I set 
the point of focus to the green dot. Now I know that everything from infinity to call it 10 feet is in focus. This is especially useful if you're shooting quickly in the continuous mode. The other thing that's important to note about these lenses is that they all take 38 millimeter filter. 38 millimeters is a very uncommon filter size, uh, so I had to get a very expensive robot filter. This is a, a light yellow filter made for these cameras. This filter alone was like 60 bucks or something. It's nice to have for black and white film and it's also nice to have a little bit of protection on the front element. So I also took some snapshots uh, just around where we were staying in Florida the morning before my flight. I wanted to finish the roll and hand check the film uh, before I flew home. There are no strap lugs on this camera, which is kind of frustrating. Um, I did find a strap from Gordy's camera straps that screws into the, the tripod mount on the bottom. And it works pretty well. The next step is to rewind the film. Uh, to do that, you have to move this mode selector dial on the back to R. There is a middle position, which is a lock for the shutter, so you can't fire the shutter. Useful if you're putting it in a bag. It also pulls a slide across the viewfinder, so when you try to look through it, you won't see anything. A helpful, helpful addition. To rewind the film, you move it to R, which releases the take-up spool and allows it to spin in the opposite direction, and then you rewind the film. The film counter doesn't automatically reset. You have to set it yourself every time you load film, but it does spin backwards when you're rewinding. I think it's very helpful because you won't be able to rewind the film all the way into the original canister because of those take-up spool teeth that lock into the sprocket holes. So it's nice to follow the film counter and make sure that you are in fact at zero when you go to open the back of the camera. Uh, you don't want to expose your film. So the shutter sound on the Robot Royal is definitely different than a lot of other cameras because of the spring-driven motor drive system that winds the film and cocks the shutter. So I just wanted to do a brief comparison to the Nikon FM3A and the Leica M3. So the shutter speed on all of these cameras is set to 1 500th of a second and you can hear for yourself uh, the differences. I took a video clip, I had Darianne take a video clip of me uh, shooting some photos of her uh, out in the real world and so you can kind of see uh, what, what the camera sounds like in, in the wild. So lastly, I wanted to show a very brief comparison that I did of the 40mm 1.9 lens on the robot camera to the 50mm 1.2 lens on the FM3A. It's not a scientific or very exact comparison, but I just wanted to show the differences between this lens, which was made in the 1950s, compared to a more modern lens uh, made with modern glass and modern coatings. 
So I think that the 40 millimeter has a very nice rendering. It is definitely less sharp. Uh, it is definitely also lacking the micro contrast that you get with the, the 50 millimeter. But personally, I think this vintage character is one of the reasons that I'm so drawn to film photography and I shoot film because I love grain and old cameras, but uh, you be the judge. If you are interested in more in-depth comparison, I encourage you to check out the link below to the article that shows uh, more about how these lenses perform on a modern digital sensor, if that's something that you're interested in. It also uh, goes more into the history of the robot camera company. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and of course, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to do some more videos like this about niche camera things that I find interesting. Definitely leave a comment if you have used this camera yourself, what your thoughts are, and thanks for watching.